Hey, this is Rob Orman from the ERCast podcast. Try some video. If you haven't heard of the ERCast podcast, emergency medicine podcast, check this link. I think you'll love it. Can you use this space for breaking news stories, follow-ups with some of our guests, some of our contributors? And today we have good friend of the program and world famous hematologist, Dr. Tom Delory, talking about a breaking news story, a hot news story, hot in a horrible way. It is synthetic cannabinoids tainted with rat poison. Let's get to it. All right. Tom, do you remember the good old days when synthetic cannabinoids, all you'd get was synthetic cannabinoids was an agitated delirium. And, uh, That's right. And, you, and, you'd be, and you'd be good to go. What, what is happening now? It's crazy. You know, you go to the, like the truck stop, get some, you know, you'd be delusional for a day or two, but it wouldn't pick up on your drug screen. And uh, but now somebody's gone and doped it with rat poison. Oh, so it's been doped. It's not just this crazy strain of synthetic. Right. Marijuana. Right. So it's it's this I guess it is a strain or a version yes. of synthetic mm -hmm. marijuana doped with rat poison. And so people are coming in with bleeding. They're bleeding. So there's been two presentations seen. One is uh, people like showing up with appendicitis or trauma and their INR and PTT are all whacked sky high. But others is just people bleeding, uh, intracranial hemorrhage, stomach bleeding, uh, all from the rat poison. And so when should we suspect this? And then what do we do? That's a good question. So I think two situations. One, obviously somebody who's bleeding a lot. And, you know, most of the time we already will go ahead and get basic coags, INR and PTT, and there will be sky high. The INR is usually undetectable. The PTT is often very high and can be undetectable. And then uh, the quick test is if you check a fibrinogen, it's normal. And that should be a pretty strong sign, especially if somebody admits using K2, spice, or synthetic marijuana. Uh, the other is sometimes people found it just while doing routine pre-ops uh, on these patients or do an INR. So certainly if somebody before a procedure has an INR that's sky high, uh, again, that should be a red flag. And is this the kind of thing where you could, you know, if they're, they're bleeding a lot, I'm thinking if it's rat poison, I'm guessing that's a vitamin K antagonist and you want to stop the bleeding or at least improve the numbers. Uh, that's right. Stop the bleeding or not. Give them some prothrombin complex concentrate or – if you don't have that fresh frozen plasma? Yeah, so it's Brodo for Coumarin, which I'm probably totally mispronouncing because I'm, I'm from Indiana and I don't know those big words. But it's a synthetic, uh, it's a derivative of warfarin. And so it binds to the vitamin K enzyme 10 times more powerfully. And so it's a much more powerful one. And what's insidious is the half life, instead of being 30 hours like warfarin, is like 30 days. And so to reverse it rapidly, like if somebody has intracranial hemorrhage, you would give prothrombin complex concentrates, or if you don't have that, FFP. The nasty part of this is it takes massive doses of vitamin K to fully reverse, like up to 100 milligrams a day. Whoa. Yeah. And, you know, there's been scant literature on how long these patients need to be treated. But in other cases of rat poison, patients may even be, need 100 milligrams of vitamin K for like over six months, up to nine months. And this, this is obviously a, a big issue that's developing because – Already one patient uh, left the hospital against medical advice and bled to death because he didn't get his vitamin K. And so I think these are going to raise all sorts of issues, but they need very intense therapy for a very long time. But I think quickly, uh, if they're bleeding, severe bleeding, you know, K-Centra, proton complex concentrates, uh, uh, 50 units per kilogram. Uh, but to get it down and to keep it down long term is high dose vitamin K, 100 milligrams orally. Big issue there is the stuff you get through the pharmacy is expensive. It's like seventy dollars per five milligrams, so it's like a thousand dollars a day. Are we talking about the IV form? Uh, no, just the pills. That's the IV is actually cheaper. Some people have actually broken the IV and just put into orange juice. So there's, I think, this is going to raise a lot of issues because there's been well, at least one hundred sixty, not and if not more, cases reported. More popping up in Florida, so it's become a big issue. Could you – can you get – I've never seen it in the pharmacy. Can you get vitamin K, like a bottle of it and say, oh, you know what? I'm going to go just take 100 milligrams of vitamin K a day over the counter. So you can't really get over the counter. It's and that's part of the difficulty is you could go to like to the health food store, uh, the local market and get 
vitamin K and it's probably pure, but I think the difficulty is the honest to goodness USP uh, prescribed stuff is a prescription drug and it comes in five milligram pills. And a few years ago, uh, like we see with a lot of other prices, the yeah, price, yeah, I got, I got just a wizard hat, hat here. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, I don't know, need some wizard hat Viagra or something, but, uh, but it turns out the, uh, they, the price of the pill went up astronomically. And so I, that's another challenge. I love your, you know what, just leave your hat as is. It's in the perfect Peyronie's position. <laughs> All right. So we've got on the street, we've got synthetic cannabinoids yep. laced or doped or broken up with or cut with rat poison, a vitamin K antagonist. It's like right. super duper duper warfarin. That's vitamin right. Vitamin K, prothrombin complex concentrate yep. for the acute bleeding. It's going to meet a lot of vitamin K for right. a long, long time. Right. And what's interesting is this – this synthetic stuff doesn't show up in drug screenings or anything. I guess that's one of the reasons why even in states where it's legal, people use it because it doesn't show up. Of course, you know, you go psychotic and stuff, but maybe that's the point. I don't know. <laughs>